These are not pictures from the latest horror film, but real life and of a very serious invasive problem here in the UK. Japanese knotweed. Not only a threat to native plants, it can cause significant problems for roads, riverbanks and railways. But more terrifying than that, it can also damage homes due to its ability to push through foundations and drainage. Introduced as a prize ornamental plant by the Victorians, it quickly took hold across the country, establishing in the mining area of Mysteg in South Wales. It was on slag heaps and very similar to the native range of where the seedlings grow on volcanic fumaroles in Japan. So it's found a home from home when it first established. Through massive development that we've had in Great Britain over 100 plus years, it's moved around to most corners of the country and it's very hard to kill is the main problem. Capable of halving the value of your home if found in the garden, it strikes fear so great into the hearts of homeowners, it spawned a multi-million pound industry dedicated to its control. Mike Clough has teams of operatives travelling the length and breadth of the country dealing with the weed. My first question about knotweed, is it really a nightmare? It can be, it can be in certain situations. Uh, if you ignore it, it will tend to just get worse. Um, so you need to be proactive. If you, if you know you've got Japanese knotweed, do something about it. How invasive is Japanese knotweed in Britain? If you were to uh, draw a map uh, over the UK and put a spot in each 10 kilometres square of the UK that has Japanese knotweed, you would cover the entire of the UK. We have people ringing us in tears, uh, having just realised they bought a property and they found Japanese knotweed at the bottom of the garden. They want somebody to come out and, and, and tell them that the, the problem can be sorted out. The formidable plant is a force to be reckoned with and can spread like wildfire. From just one small fragment of rhizome or root, it can take hold and grow at an astonishing speed in good conditions. In early summer, growing as much as three centimetres a day. I'm sure many people's first instinct would be, oh, it's a bunch of weeds, let's just chop them down. So that's a big no-no, you shouldn't do that. Absolutely not. All of the fragments that you break off have the ability to regrow. So if you go chopping at it, you are likely to cause the plant to spread rather than uh, actually eradicating it. Far from being benign rubbish, its impressive ability to reproduce means it must be disposed of as controlled waste. Hi, Katie, you all right? Hi, this is Mike. Okay, so Katie please Jones please. from Northamptonshire wants to sell her home but is being forced to reconsider after she discovered Japanese knotweed growing in her garden. Um, we have just one shoot here. Okay. I mean, it doesn't look like a big problem at the moment. So why are you so worried about it? I know this stuff can cause problems with the foundations in your property and I'm aware of how quick it can spread. It is a problem. So you're planning to sell your property at the moment? Yes, and I had three um, estate agents come round. Um, I obviously made them aware that I knew about this and they pretty much told me my house is unsellable. How does it make you feel? Well, it's kind of <laughs> gut-wrenching really because I'm a homeowner, I want to sell my property and I can't do that whilst I've got this in the garden. Mike has been taking a look in neighbouring gardens and has found a sizeable patch of knotweed growing next door. Well, I can see the problem here. It's a significant problem. There's new growth over to the side there, uh, lots of new growth in the paving here, which is obviously um, still very uh, viable. It has had some chemical treatment on it, but uh, at the moment it's not been particularly effective. Katie's neighbour has been fighting a valiant but losing battle with the noxious weed for the past three years and she is concerned she faces the same. How do you suggest we deal with it? Uh, I think a long-term chemical strategy um, in cooperation with your neighbours is, is your best way forward. You can buy chemicals over the counter that you can repeat apply to the plant. It will take several years. I would back off a little bit and let the plant show a little bit of growth. So if you have a leaf on it and you spray the chemical on it, then the chemical is absorbed right down to the roots and it's the roots underneath the ground that you're trying to kill. Keep careful records, show what you've done, uh, and that can all help you in the, in the house sale process. And I think you've caught it at the right time and you should be able to resolve the issues. Okay. So how do you feel about that, Katie? Now that you've kind of got a plan moving forward? Yeah, I mean, now that I know it can be treated, um, hopefully myself and my neighbours will be able to resolve the issue. And Katie's right to be proactive. 
New government rules state that if homeowners with an invasive weed on their property fail to make a reasonable attempt to control it and it adversely affects their neighbours, they could be liable for an ASBO. As well as the dreaded knotweed, this rule also applies if you find giant hogweed or Himalayan balsam within your boundary. Usually we only care about alien species when they start damaging things that we care about. Japanese knotweed is mostly in our gardens, in our suburbs, and it can take over, it can move along riverbanks, it can do that kind of thing. But it doesn't usually invade the countryside because by and large it doesn't like that environment. It likes disturbed land. So like many invasive species, it moves in when we've messed up the environment, where we've created a space for it. Homeowners are not the only ones forking out in the battle against the weed. The yearly cost to the economy is thought to be £165 million, pounds, and it's not the only area that's making us dig deep. Experts believe every sector of society is affected by alien invaders, and the expense is growing.